friends, it's Paige Evans. I have a new process video to share with you today. This was made for my October Joanne sponsored layout. So I am using my Pick Me Up collection and border punches, all of which can be found in Joanne stores or online at joanne.com. So for online, I found the 2x2 two two swatch books, the journaling spots pack, the 6x6 six six paper pad, which includes gold foiling, lots of sheets of that, the colorful, colorful chipboard thickers with the flower detailing, the mini foam thickers, white on the front, navy on the back, washi tape book, so it's got three pages of strips of washi, the ephemera die cuts pack, love all of the shapes and icons included in there, and the 12 by 12 paper pad, which also includes gold foiling. And most of what I'm going to use today is from this 12 by 12 paper pad. So I picked out one of every paper, and I'm using six border punches. Four of them are from Fiskars, one is from Martha Stewart Crafts, and the last one is from EK Success. You can find these at Joanne. And I am going to punch the border along one edge of every pattern paper and trim it into about a one, a one and a half inch strip. And I love these border punches because it's got the image on the left and right side, so you don't need to guess where to put your punch next, you just align it up with that image and keep punching along. And I love all the different varieties of punches. There's a lace punch, apron lace, scalloped, like doily looking, so big variety of border punches. Hang on to these, they might go out of style, but they'll always come back in. So I've held on to my border punches throughout the years and I'm glad I did. So, once you have all of the strips punched, I am going to do this fun technique where I'm spraying each paper strip with water, crinkling it up, smashing it, you know, just giving it lots of texture. And by making it wet, it helps make the paper more pliable. And so yeah, just spritz it with water, crinkle it up, open it back up, and then let every paper strip dry. And this kind of makes it look like crepe paper or even ribbon and yeah just gives it lot, lots of texture. So I let them dry for a few hours and then I arranged these paper strips in rainbow order and I am placing them across a smooth white cardstock background just trying to figure out the layout and where I want every paper strip and where my photo is going to go or my title is going to go. I know I want to use these paper strips but I'm not exactly sure what I want to do next. Anyway, the paper strips were still a little bit two dimensional and so I put a box on top, put some heavy weights on top and let them flatten for a while and then getting back to work. So I'm trying to pick my photo. I printed a bunch of 12 inch wide photos but I don't know, I feel like it was taking away from the pattern paper so I decided to go with a smaller photo. of Jane on her sixth birthday and I think the colors in the photo go along perfectly with the pattern paper strips. So starting at the bottom of the white cardstock, I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive on the back side and starting at the bottom, stitch across the top of the strip using my sewing machine and white thread and it doesn't need to be perfect because you're not going to see the thread and just stitch along. So place the next one on top, stitch across using a basic running stitch and trim off the excess thread. So here I'm attaching the last paper strip at the top and I'm leaving about two inches empty at the top for my photo and title and journaling and some embellishments. I had a couple different ideas, cut the photo into a six, cut a piece of vellum into a large six, but ultimately I just decided to use just the photo in a rectangle with white edges. I'm going to trim off the excess thread and also tear off some of the edges of the pattern paper that are maybe a little bit too long. I like the texture of the thread, so I'm not trimming them perfectly all the way back. And I just love this cascading, colorful, eye candy, textural, <laughs> paper background going on. Again, tearing the strips to give it 
make it more dynamic, I guess, so the paper strips aren't all the same length. Then from the ephemera die cuts pack, I'm going to pull out a whole bunch of flower die cuts. There's probably six, seven, or eight flowers in this set, and I'm going to use almost all of them and tuck them underneath the photo, and this helps draw the eye into the photo, and by creating this cluster, your eye goes right there. And then I want to add a few things here and there on the layout. I'm going to do the tone on tone look eventually, so the pink moth will go on the pink pattern papers, the red moth on the red pattern papers, etc. For the title, it's going to be six years old, so I'm just trying to figure out which combination of thickers I want to use. You could even turn the nines upside down and use those as sixes. I like doing white on white. It creates a really cool texture. So from these mini foam white thickers, I'm going to create the title. Yeah, again, it says six years old. Right now, I'm just auditioning the placement of things, as my friend Missy Whidden likes to say. I like that term because I'm not exactly sure where everything is going to go. Moving things around to see where they fit best. I always like to add a bird on my layouts because Jane is obsessed with birds. I actually don't end up using this crane, but because it's a little too big, I think it's it becomes too much in focus, and so I remove the bird, but it was fun while it lasted. I'm going to write journaling across the top of this line, so it kind of blends into the design, but the caption at least tells the story of what's going on in the picture. Going to fussy cut one of these mods from the pattern paper. I feel like there I didn't have enough embellishments over the blues and aquas, and so I cut out an aqua moth and going to place it over the aqua pattern paper section. Placing foam adhesive on the back so it pops off the page. Thought about using this blue frame on the bottom instead of the bird, but in the end I went with this watermelon heart. I feel like it doesn't distract or detract, distract, detract anymore. <laughs> and then since none of the other die cuts had a white border, I'm just going to go ahead and fussy cut this white border off of this butterfly die cut so it matches with the rest of them. Just using my favorite pair of pink American Crafts fine tipped scissors to cut that border off. And then I like how it blends in more. All right, so here is the finished layout, and I hope you are inspired to pick up the Pick Me Up collection from joanne.com or in stores, as well as make good use out of your order punches and using water to crinkle them up and create this really textured background. Thanks so much for watching. See you again soon.